I think the hydrogen story is absolutely major, um, but it will come in different way. We believe blue hydrogen, that is natural gas with carbon capture, will be as important as green hydrogen, which is water with electrolysis with renewable power. So there will be different ways to produce clean hydrogen. And then this will be used in many different parts of the economy. We think it's absolutely key for heavy transport. It is key for heating and for industry, especially for the steel industry. So we are very bullish on the development of hydrogen from here. And we think it could rise between 10 and 20% of the global decarbonization push. Michaela, can I pick up on uh, some of the calls you've made for uh, electrification and hydrogen around road transportation? You've singled out for uh, light vehicle sales and new energy vehicles. You see that full penetration by 2035, so about 14 odd years away, a little bit further on for the heavy duty market uh, for, by 2040. How does that fit with what we're seeing in terms of the investments from some of the, the major car and truck companies and also the infrastructure required for charging of these vehicles? So we think the infrastructure for charging alone will be a multiple trillion dollar investment on a global basis. And we think it will be necessary and it needs to be laid out in the next 10 years. Um, we do expect, again, under these scenarios that are consistent with the Paris Agreement, that uh, effectively we will have full electrification of new sales vehicles on the light vehicles by 2035 we still ha will have a fleet of internal combustion engine for a few years after that. It typically takes about 15 years to completely change a fleet of cars. And that could still drive some uh, um, demand for gasoline and diesel for quite a few um, years to come. But overall, we do see also a huge technological improvement there. We believe battery costs could halve from here and that will effectively put electric vehicles pretty much in the money in the second half of this decade compared with um, internal combustion engines. And that is what drives a lot of the uptake and growth from the point of view of this new generation of uh, vehicles. I want to just turn to the oil market because we were having a conversation with Neil Atkinson before about what uh, OPEC and its allies are likely to be debating today, medium, longer term motivations of trying to raise proceeds now to fund the transition to uh, cleaner fuels in future. And if you consider one of your uh, main takeaways from this report, that there will be peak oil demand by 2025. What does that mean for many of these oil producing nations to try and make the pivot and ensure that they've kitchen sinked enough of the assets and reinvested in the future by 2025? I think it's really a tale of two, almost two different stories. I think this decade, we are going to see higher oil and higher gas prices driven by extreme underinvestment. Yes, there will be um, potentially peak oil demand, um, you know, 2025 in a Paris Agreement scenario, 2030 under current policy. But the reality is there's also a lot of decline rates in oil and current investments in oil and gas are severely restricted by concerns around climate change. And so we are actually very bullish on the outlook for energy prices this decade as the underinvestment in supply is an even more powerful driver of prices than the slowdown in demand. But then tougher days will come, especially in the 2030s and 40s when demand for oil really starts to decline meaningfully. And that's why I think it's important both for the listed oil companies and for the OPEC government to really use these amazing windfalls that we believe that we get in terms of free cash generation this decade to prepare the transition for the future. And that transition will mean investments in hydrogen, investments in carbon capture, investments in renewable energy, in a different way of producing materials and plastic with a bigger role for the circular economy. But I think the cash flow will be there to finance this transition, and that will come from a supply-led rise in energy prices.